Hello and welcome to another stay at home edition of Mid American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, tonight we've got a lot to talk about. We've got some show and tells, and of course, your questions that you send in from the garden. So let's have our panelists who are here tonight uh, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their specialty. So, John, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us about what you're into in the garden. Okay, I'm uh, John Bodensteiner. I'm a Vermilion County Master Gardener. And uh, I've, I've been on my, in our area now for 46 years. And so we've got a lot of shade. So I'm, I'm into hostas a lot. I've got, um, you know, I used to have a lot of different sub products and, you know, things that grew in the sun, but I've had to switch to hookahs, hostas, and that type of thing because I have so much shade. I still have a lot of trees, shrubs. I do have one area that I do like sun, you know, sun loving plants. I have a vegetable garden and uh, just about, you know, if, if it's, if it photosynthesizes, if it's not a weed, I pretty much like it. <laughs> Anything that's green, that's not a weed. Oh, it doesn't have to be green, I guess. Just not a weed. All yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you, John. And Ella? Um, I'm Ella Maxwell from uh, Peoria here, and I work at a garden center, but I'm also a master gardener. And uh, what I really like is uh, trees and shrubs as well. I have a large yard and a lot of perennials and vegetable gardens and uh, lots of things to share as well. Wonderful. Let's get started then. So show and tells is always right off the top. Uh, John, we'll start with you since you're okay. first. What do you got for us today? Okay. One of my, you know, with all the flower beds I have this year, and I'll hold this still so you can see it a little bit better. This is called a circle hole. And the way it works is this part right here is sharp. And so when you, you, you take the ground and, and it, especially very small weeds, you can cover a lot of ground in a, in a hurry. And I usually am on my hands and knees anyway, because you can get very close if you have a, a plant here, you can just go right around it without mm -hmm. disturbing that and even come down on this side and pull or go on this side and push. And it it has got to be one of my more favorite tools and it's called a circle hole. And it comes in, it comes in a couple of different sizes. This is the smaller one. Now, does that have a serrated edge on it? No, it's, it, it is a little sharp, uh -huh. but it's not serrated. So Interesting. But, you I've know, never if you seen go this. like this, the soil and the weeds just go right through. And so you cut the weeds off and the soil doesn't, you know, you're not pulling all the soil in a, in a pile because it goes right through the, the circle and it still uh, takes the weeds in. And you can just go like that and all the cut off weeds, you can just lift them off and they're, they're history. Hmm. I might have to look into that. Right now I'm using, I've got that curved trowel with the, oh, yeah. the point. Yeah. And I use that, but I, I might have to invest in that. Yeah. You know, it's, good it's tools available on the internet. Way. It's it's on the internet and you can find it um, at some of the garden centers too. Hmm. Okay. I will be looking into that because tools, good tools can give you a couple extra hours in the day. You know, you start to get tired and your back's hurting, but if you've got good tools, yep. you can keep a little bit in the tank and work a little longer. Okay, thank you. We will circle ho. We will look into that. I know I will. All right, Miss Ella, what do you have? Well, I learned about a new insect um, that I had not really known before, and it's on walnuts. And I have a large walnut tree next to my house. And the bane of our existence is when the walnuts fall in um, the fall. So over the winter, we found out that the English particularly pickle walnuts. So you pick the walnuts now while they're green and you put them in a brine for two weeks and then you pickle them and enjoy them at Christmas. So I thought, well, I've got plenty of walnuts. So I'm going to try that. And the walnuts kept falling off my tree here. And what happened was... Um, they all had little worms inside. It's called the black walnut curculio, and it's a little overwintering beetle that uh, lays an egg in the flesh of the developing walnut, and it migrates to the center, and then they're all rotted um, on the inside. So that wasn't going to work this year. The walnuts are all 
<laughs> rotted. But I did find some walnuts, and this is what one looks like that I'm pickling in this brine. So I've got a, a jar of walnuts uh, that I've started to pickle. Okay. It was so interesting, but I, this is a serious <laughs> problem in um, black walnut orchards. I mean, it's something they have to spray for. Actually, I'm glad that we have it because it means less walnuts in the fall. Up to half of the walnuts can fall off because of this insect. Hmm. And this it's is the obvious. first you've like, ever seen them? This is the first, well, you've first time them? I've ever really noticed. I've noticed little, you know, little walnuts fall off, but I never knew why. And mm -hmm. now I do know why. And the uh, little uh, uh, larva will then pupate inside and emerge from the walnut and then go back and feed on the leaves and over, over winter. And uh, then it's a single generation cycle. But... It was so interesting. They call it June drop June in drop. walnut orchards. And of course, if you were growing English walnuts, which is what the English are pickling, but you can do it with black walnuts too. And the, um, the shell hasn't formed yet. That's why you'll be able to eat them. But you've got to use a brine to get oh, rid of all it. of that, the, the juggalo, I don't know, whatever that makes them black. Juggalo. Stains your little fingers. And and the Italian fun. like to pick those too. And they make a liqueur out of theirs. And they, they pick them on St. John the Baptist is the day, his holiday, his holy day, uh, is the day you pick the walnuts and then you uh, put them in an alcoholic um, brine, so to speak, and let them sit there for a couple of months. And it makes a very interesting and uh, delicate uh, liqueur. And I know some of the master gardeners in Danville here uh, have, have done that for quite a few years, so. Ooh, wow. I might have to try that too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, got, I need everybody got to lots walk of me back to pickling because I'm stuck there. So what does a pickled walnut taste like? Well, we don't know. I've never had one. Okay, this there is the inaugural I run. I okay, I didn't know if you'd had them before because I have never even oh. heard of the concept. No. Have you ever have you ever cut a, a walnut tree or or you know like a branch? You know mm -hmm. that scent, that very distinctive scent. Yes. Yes. You get that in the liqueur, and I'm sure you're going to get that when you ferment or when you pickle them also. Huh. Right, but at this we're, stage, we're gonna of the try a sweet pickle and a dill pickle. I have two no. batches going. <laughs> but at this time of the year, like Ella said, the the, the shell inside is soft, so you can just cut them. And what they uh -huh. usually do is say to quarter them and put them in the brine, and uh, you'll get the flavor much better flavor that way. Hot dog! I learned something every time we're together, guys, and today is no exception. <laughs> Pickled walnuts. Okay, thank you, Ella. All right, uh, John, let's see. Do we have other show and tells? Just one round of show and tells on this one? All right, let's 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 move into our questions. We'll start with you, John. Um, this is a salvia question from Nancy. She writes in, every year we put out salvia around our flagpole and every year something cuts the plants off at the bottom and leaves them lying there pretty much intact. In the past, my husband thought it was ground squirrels and caught a couple in rat traps. This year, no luck so far. I'm raising replacement plants in pots. So she knows now she's got other ones in pots to bring them out. Um, wondering if it's cutworms or birds. Um, they just have no clue what is getting into their salvia. So what are your thoughts, John? What are some possibilities that they could be seeing? I, I would think that it is a ground squirrel. Um, some, some. I don't think it's cutworms because she says, it's not at right at the ground level. So mm -hmm. cutworms usually will not go above the ground. You know, like, it, you know, we used to have put coffee cans around all our tomatoes when we grew up in North Dakota to keep the cutworms away from the tomato plants until they got big enough. So, but it was right at ground level where cutworms um, would, would do their damage. But, you know, I've been having, you know, I, I was telling Ella before the, sh the show started that, I planted a bunch of butter daisies here a couple of days ago and I went out and they were all dug out of the ground. And I'm sure I have a raccoon that's searching. Ella thought maybe they might be searching for worms or caterpillars, you know, something like that, that goes towards something loose and, and new soil. But I would bet that she has um, 
chipmunks or something like that that are chewing it off. And they usually just are looking for moisture. Uh, I know we've had some dry periods here. Uh, recently, we've had some moisture, but I, I know in certain areas of Illinois, it's still very dry. So I would bet that the chipmunks or something like that are chewing it off. Could even be a small rabbit. Uh, yeah. If they've got uh, rabbits, uh, they'll chew things off and uh, they'll usually try a few things. And if they don't like it, they'll, they won't eat the whole plant. They'll just chew it off and test it. And you've got, a plant, the next on thing. You've got a plant laying on its side, but uh, I've got groundhogs. I've got deer. I, I have my tomatoes that were chewed off inside of the cage by a, oh. a deer. I, I don't know. He had to have gone over and put his head down because he chewed off. Uh, and then my hostas, all the flowers are gone. Just the, not, not the leaves, which is okay. But um, I was going to try to save some of the, the seeds this year to, you know, because I, I cross pollinate some of them. But um, I oh, guess yes, I'm John, do that you need year. another hosta, right? <laughs> <laughs> How many do you have out there? 300 and I have 300 varieties. I have close to 10,000 plants, I guess. Wow. So, yes, you needed a few more, I guess. <laughs> I'm always trying to get my own variety. Gotcha. That's the goal, right? Okay, so what can they, I mean, oh, what do you do? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I, I interrupted would, you. I would say that uh, you can continue to try the trap, but I would, I would do some cayenne pepper around so that when they walk on it or just sprinkle it a little bit on the plant. And that way, as soon as they chew, they, most of them will not like that. And they, if it gets on their feet, they'll lick it and they'll, um, they'll leave the area and, and they won't come back. Okay. They'll go right. someplace that won't have cayenne. Okay. All right. All right. We'll move on to Ella now. Uh, question 955, red raspberries. This is a long one, so bear with me. Hi, I'm hoping to gain insight on underperforming uh, red raspberries. The variety is Jacqueline, and they're a primocane type that I've been harvesting in spring and fall. Used to get good results, but for the past two years, the, the berries have been small and crumbly. Plant is healthy, mulch with straw and watered if needed, no sign of pests. Um, it gets plenty of sun every day, direct, about nine hours. And let's see, I read online about some possible causes. They talked about poor weather conditions. Um, even read that lack of boron could potentially cause small berries, but don't think that's likely. They were huge the first two years. Now they're underperforming. I do not use chemicals, um, but add decayed leaves and straw every year. Um, so this person sounds like they're doing a whole lot um, in the right way. Um, the soil is good. You know, they've tried everything, but still not having luck. And they sent some pictures as well. This is from Mark. Um, so, Ella, what are your thoughts here when you've got somebody who's doing everything right um, and, and still not having a, a good production? Well, I think the first thing that I noticed when I looked at his berries and he said that they were crumbly. So you can see that um, to have a fully formed raspberry fruit, um, there are lots of seeds that need to be pollinated because each seed has its own little uh, fleshy part around it. So his crumbly berries means that he is not getting good pollination. And most of the raspberries are pollinated by bees, maybe I think a lot by bumblebees, but they're not going to fly in rainy, wet weather. So chances are he's just had some poor pollination because of the weather patterns. And what does get pollinated makes a good size berry, but it's not a full berry. Um, the other thing that I think too is his, um, I think he could increase his fertilizer or his fertility because I think the straw and the leaves aren't enough uh, nitrogen and he could certainly use an organic source there to help feed the berries. And again, um, it looks like they're good and healthy. So I think he's got good pruning practices with those primal canes to get a spring and a, a fall crop. But uh, I, would, um, I would blame it on the weather and I would increase fertility. And try to get more bees. I, I, think, you're, I think you're exactly right is that it's a pollinator problem. Um, and I know the um, orchard bees, if he has any of those, 
if he could put out an orchard bee house, that might help uh, because they do like, they pollinate 150 times more than a, a honeybee does. So if you can get um, some um, orchard bees in, I think he'd be very happy with that. And one other thing he mentioned was borax. I definitely would never use borax. Uh, no, I, I, I know that was yeah. boron. Yeah, well, boron. That's, yeah, like, that's from borax. It's, it's, okay. That's how you get it. And and I know that used to be a a cure for creeping Charlie. And I I, I just don't think that that's um, that's okay. needed. Okay, I was going to ask about that because um, that's. I, that's the first I've heard that. I've heard people talk about other household items, but that's the first time I've heard borax. Um, so keeping that theme, Ella, we have another berry question for you. Um, this is from Douglas, and he says, I have a wild raspberry plant growing in my yard. Some produce nice berries, others do not. Others, they're very small. What can I do for the ones that are not producing? Oh, okay. Again, with the um, with the black raspberries, they're only going to have a single fruit crop. And then once they've fruited, um, you cut those canes away. And then the trick to getting really good berries, I think, uh, according to my friend, um, who does an excellent job with black raspberries, is uh, pinching them back when they're about three, three and a half foot tall. That'll send out side shoots and that's where the berries the following year will yeah. be formed. But also um, fertilizing them and keeping them upright like um, maybe not necessarily a trellis but on some kind of, of line to, to keep them uh, more upright rather than and don't let them go down and root again. Does that make kind sense? Of, kind of like it some of the uh, the grape growers use. You know, you'd, mm -hmm. you'd put a, a, some cable a down and, 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 and put it, uh, tie it on to that. Okay. All right. Mr. Bodensteiner, we're coming back to you for another question. Uh, this is 952 Apple Tree. Hi, attached are photos of our young and newly transplanted apple tree. It was very healthy with green leaves and a few flowers before transplant. Since then, many of the leaves have yellowed and now have developed the curling and brown spots you can see in the photos. It's a Jonah Gold apple tree, if that makes a difference. We also recently started to water it with a donut. Any advice would be appreciated. I can also provide any other information. And they sent some photos for this one as well. So yeah. let's check it out. So it was I very healthy that, when they bought it, and now it's not looking so hot. Yeah, I think I think what it is is a combination of a couple of things. It could be some um, just stress from transplant. We've had, you know, we had some cold, and then it got very hot. And I think, you know, when there's stress like that from transplanting, they go through all kinds of things. And then it also, it looked like maybe some apple scab or some cedar apple rust too. Uh, this year has been very wet. So the cedars have been putting, I don't know if they have cedars in the area that wasn't in there, but those things, I, I know some of the cedar trees in our area have all these little orange um, clusters. And those are, are the, um, the culprits basically for the spots on a lot of the apple trees. and and. And I think that variety that he mentioned is is susceptible to cedar apple rust. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, both of you are, are master gardeners. So um, with all of the new gardeners that we've got uh, this spring and summer, what are some calls that you guys are seeing? Ella, we'll start with you. What are some calls that you guys are seeing in the offices or even at the nursery Um some, some pitfalls of new gardeners that maybe you can help other folks avoid? Well, um, the questions that I'm seeing a lot is people have bought plants in the last month now that the weather pattern has changed and it's so much hotter and drier and they aren't following a good watering schedule. What happens is they took the plant home, uh, especially in May, they planted 
did it. We got all that rain and they just kind of forgot about it. And now um, it wilted terribly. So now they're overcompensating and they don't realize that watering every day can be uh, more detrimental than allowing it to wilt some and watering uh, less frequent frequently. So that's the big thing now is they're expensive purchases are looking terrible you know kind of like that apple tree and most mm -hmm. of it has to do with the transplant stress and also not following a good watering cycle i think that's a major thing that we're seeing okay so get on a good watering schedule yeah maybe just twice a week and you know use your little finger to to check if the mm -hmm. top of the soil is moist, it's not a function of not enough water. It's the root system just can't supply it. And it's more of a supply and demand issue. Okay. All right, John, what, uh, what questions or issues are you seeing in Vermillion County? Right now I'm seeing bagworms. Mm. Uh, they are crawling and they're out of the, out of the uh, bags and uh, they've, they've hatched. And so, we're seeing some new bags being formed. And now is before they get into that bag where they're not susceptible to the spray, now is the time to spray them. And, and uh, there's a product called BT, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, which only, only um, kills those type of, of caterpillars. And so um, now's the time to get out and spray for that, it, especially if you have New evergreens, uh, check your evergreens because uh, if you get infested, uh, they can defoliate an evergreen in a very short period of time. The other thing I've seen is a lot of galls this year, especially on maples and hickories, uh, and that's called by uh, caused by a little tiny aphid. It's a stem gall, uh, and uh, they, they usually will not <clears throat> harm the tree unless, especially a mature tree. On a new tree, a new transplant, they could cause some uh, some damage. So, um, but if it's a, an established tree, uh, clean up uh, would be the the uh, the, the uh, this fall. Make sure that you pick up all the leaf uh, debris and uh, clean up around it. And uh, again, uh, this year with the, the moisture, the first the frost, the late frost, then the moisture, then the dry, then the heat. Now it's some more humid. We're going to see a lot of, I think we're going to see a lot of funguses, uh, a, a sooty mold and different things like that uh, on, on peonies and things. You're going to start to see some cold words, um, white. And if, if you do that, get some air circulation in your peonies or flocks. That's another susceptible one. Catalpa trees. Uh, and they, yeah. is it true that you can dust it off or you can dust the, the mold off with your finger? Is that how you can tell the difference? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's um, like a fuzzy, mm -hmm. like almost mm -hmm. like a fuzz on it. Okay. Um, Ella, we've had a lot of people write in. The two overarching things we've, that I've seen are people writing in that their uh, trees are, are not doing well. Some established, some new. And the other one is um, some of their annuals. Well, no, it's been a good mix, but flowers not blooming. So um, what what could cause that? Like hydrangeas, we've seen that question come in a lot. Why are they not blooming? Why are they not blooming? Um, my Gerber daisies aren't doing a whole lot this year. Is is the rain um, or the drought or the temperature, it has something crazy happened that is perhaps making some of our flowers not want to bloom? No. Uh, no? That has, I, I think... The most important thing for people to do is to um, understand how that plant grows. So the questions that you get about hydrangeas not blooming are most likely for the macrophylla types that um, are rebloomers, but the first set of blooms comes on old wood. So you have to know what kind of plant you have. The Gerbera daisies are very heavy feeders, and any of them coming from the nurseries are used to getting um, large amounts of fertilizer to push for those flowers. 
And when they come home to someone who is not continuing mm -hmm. that practice, um, they can stop. And some plants uh, will flower more profusely in certain kinds of, you know, they need a cool night or, or they need a short mm. day length. So you have to understand what kind of plant do I have and what makes it do what it's supposed to do. So the more information you get about the plant and the more you know about it, the more you'll be able to, to have it do well for you. That and makes perfect sense. When I first got the Gerbera daisies home and planted them, they were just blooming like crazy. And I do feed them, but probably not near what they were doing at the nursery. Um, so that's, that's probably. Yeah. Um, Cause they, they should continue to flower for, for, they're the just slower. They're just not doing it. They're not performing as fast as when I first brought them home. And, but. and use a, don't use a real high, high nitrogen. Use a good balanced fertilizer because the phosphorus and potash are needed for, for good root production and flowering. So right. a good, especially if they, especially if they're in pots and you have to water, you drip out the bottom and a lot of times there goes your nutrients. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, they are, petunias are another one that are a really high, high needed fertilizer. Okay. Well, operator error, right? <laughs> it's easy to blame the environment when things don't go right. And usually it's us, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for sharing your time and talents. Really appreciate it. It's always a fun time with both of you. And maybe one day we'll get back in the studio again uh, to well, see each other I in did person. I want to ask you if your banana is growing. It is. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll yeah. have to show that next time, which is another plant that I found that I was perhaps underwatering because with these two days of heavy rain, these things have shot up like a foot. I mean, it's I crazy have bananas on my banana tree. Yeah. So um, it's just awesome watching all this grow. Thank you for sending that. And I'll post updates to that. So thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Good night. Good night.